and I'm back. <laughs> it never ends. It keeps going and going. Uh, this is my favorite topic, gender. Uh, you know, I had to take me a break. I had to put my hair up in the teacher bun because we're about to get serious. <laughs> um, the next two things that uh, terms or whatnot that I need to point out is uh, the child penalty and the glass ceiling, which uh, Otep talked about in her song called Boss that we watched the other day. Glass ceiling, I, you know, I've already kind of talked about it, um, but those are the two uh, topics. And then I'm probably going to talk for like 45 minutes about everything else, but main two things you need to know from this section is uh, child penalty and glass ceiling. If I go any further, I'll let you know what the next topics are. Okay. So what we got here is gender inequality in the workplace. So Sean, I'm doing a live stream on Facebook and a live stream here. <laughs> okay. Anyway, uh, I'm still doing two live streams at once. All right. Now it starts off with three little words. the pay gap the pay gap all right now hang on i forgot let me pull up my powerpoints okay it can be called the gender pay gap the the gender wage gap you know there's a, there's a couple of different na names for it but for the test they term it the gender pay gap because that's what the book by Henslin Goat uses. Okay. Uh, the gender pay gap basically is difference between wages paid to males and females. Once again, we're still in this binary category of males and females. Side note, there's more genders than just male and female. Not on the test, not in intro to SOCH. Uh, take my gender class next semester and we'll talk all about it. Um, all right. The gender pay gap, differences in pay to men and women, it occurs in all industrialized nations. Okay. Uh, so basically, you know, countries that are, you know, first world, second world, or, or however you want to call them, there's a difference in pay. Why? Why? Well, I can explain it to you for about, oh, three years, but um, we're just going to hit the high, high spots. Um, first, let's put this out first. All right, compared to back in the day to today, yes, there are more women working outside of the home today than in the past. Uh, this, this is, you know, a, a big increase. Just think about the family wage of a heterosexual couple with children. If the man and woman work, think about how much more money the family unit would have. Or has standard of living gone so high that we need two, two earners to survive. Anyway, another day. Gender pay gap. Difference. Oh, so here we go. Let's see. Uh, slide 23. What is the pay gap? Well, I did a, I've done a lot of research on it. The last research that I did, I'm going to say was in uh, 2016 or something like that. Uh, here we go. This is what we can find. All right, what does it look like? What they do is they put it on a, a, a ratio of a man makes a dollar. How much does a woman make per every dollar that a man makes? All right, and so what we found is the average woman makes 72 to 79 cents per dollar of every man, I mean, of man, men. All right, so we'll, you don't have to remember the exact cent, you know, that it's 72 to 79 cents. You don't have to remember the exact. Just know that there is a difference, all right? Um, this discrepancy has closed, you know, back in the 1950s, it was a whole lot wider. 
So, you know, women are catching up to men's earnings, but still on average, they, they uh, bring in 72 to 79 cents for every dollar that a man earns. Now, of course, people are like, oh, well, it's because of this and it's because of this. Well, this is how they did the research or, you know, this is what they say. You know, they did uh, whatever type of methodology they chose, but they, they picked out variables for their research. You know, they looked at income, they looked at gender. All right. And then they controlled these other variables. All right. So we could say that men and women both have like, uh, when doing the research and, and comparing incomes for, for men and women, both men and women in this research project have the same education, the same occupation, the same number of years in a job, the same seniority level, the same marital status, the same number of children, et cetera, et cetera. They controlled for a variety of factors where those variables were the same and they still saw a difference in pay. You know, like some people will say, oh, well, it's because, uh, you know, married women, you know, uh, you know, uh, don't get paid enough because there's not enough married women in the workforce. No, no, no. This research said a man was married, a woman was married. There's still a pay gap. Uh, they said, you know, oh, well, uh, a woman gets uh, less education. No, no. Education level, same. Gen the pay, different. All right. They even controlled for the number of children, really. And they still found a difference. Now, um, like I said, we move, move along to slide number 24. It says uh, the gender pay gap over time. And as you can look, uh, let's see, they started in, in 1960. Well, hell. Huh. You know what, y'all? Is that right? Oh, okay. I see the 72 cents. Actually, the gender pay gap has not decreased. Um, huh. Like, for example, 2010. At the 72 cent marker, women are making 45,000, men are making 62,000. Same job, same number of years experience, same occupational title, same number of education level, same number of children, same marital status. Everything is the same, but their difference in pay on average. Now, I know somebody's going to be like, but, you know, raise a hand to be like, but my mom is a neurosurgeon and she makes more money than my daddy. Well, it's called exceptions. There are exceptions. That's why we say, uh, instead of using causation, we say correlation. Um, and in sociology, we say most likely or less likely because there's always an exception to the rule. Um, but when you look on average, the general pattern, you find a difference in pay. Now, this is where I was going to go a while ago when we were talking about gender tracking. Like this slide makes me toe up upset. What's up, Derek? I'm doing a, uh, for my class, a live stream, and then I'll be back to y'all. All right, so slide 25, figure 10.7, the gender pay gap by education. All right, so it says at the beginning, the average of all workers is the 72 cents to dollar. Now, it just tears me up, tears me up. All right, here we go. So they broke it down by gender, by educational level, and by income. And what they found was the higher the educational level, the wider the gap. Really, really. As in, the more education you receive, the bigger the pay gap is between men and women. Uh, for example, 
let's say a man and woman both have a high school diploma. The woman will make 70 cents for every dollar that a man earns. Okay. Uh, no, I'm sorry. That's high school dropouts. High school dropouts. 70 cents to the dollar. College graduates. $0.68 cents to the dollar. So, as in, even if women get more education, there's still a difference in pay doing the same job. Why? Oh, I got reasons. I got explanations. I mean, explanations for 10 years to talk about. But, you know, just, just be known, you know, make it known that there is a Difference in pay for doing the same job based on gender, and it increases the higher the education gets. Oh, that hurts my feelings, you know. Like, and 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 you know, put it in your own lives, in your perspectives. You know, if you are um, male or female, and think about your mom, you know, wouldn't you want? You know, well, my mom got her PhD. She should be making a whole bunch of money. And then she gets the PhD and she still don't make as much as a man with a PhD. It's not fair. You see? Um, you know, or your grandma or your sister or your daughter or your wife or your girlfriend. You know? Uh, instead of saying just women or females, put it, put it, make it personal, you know? All right. Now, let me see if we got any other little, little, little tidy bits and in information to add before we give out reasons why there's a pay gap. Okay. Um, let's see. Uh, in 2003, the nation's top 500 company corporations, only seven were headed by women out of 500. Uh, Let's see. Yeah, 79, 70. All right, so now we're on to reasons for the gender pay gap. Why is there a difference in pay when it comes to males and females doing the same job? Number one, interruptions in work history. Okay. And, and this is on the test, the child penalty. Uh, women miss out on work experience and promotions and opportunities because they're caring for children. What happens is the, the woman's at work and the man's at work, you know, in a heterosexual couple with children. The child is at school. The child gets a fever. Can't be at school. Got to go home. Who usually leaves their work and gets the kid? Usually what they see in research is that the woman takes off work and goes and gets the child, take them to the doctor, bring them home. Hey, Nikki Davis, I am I. <laughs> Nikki Davis is a wonderful, intelligent human being. And uh, she is, uh, she's very good to me. She's, she's a very good person living down in Pensacola, Florida. Uh, I'm on, I'm talking about the gender pay gap and, uh, you know, it's been 13 minutes and I still hadn't got my shit across. <laughs> I had to put the teacher bun up cause I was getting serious. Oh, and, uh, Nikki side note, check it out real quick. <laughs> Not a boss. I'm just a boss. I'm the girl who became king. <laughs> <laughs> I actually, I took this to class and we talked about it and we watched uh, Boss, uh, the video, and we went through the Boss lyrics. Show did. And uh, and everybody got it and they understood and uh, it hopefully made a mark. I don't know, on the students. Uh, but I'm trying to keep it hidden because, you know, I'm trying to be professional. And I got an ugly word on my shirt. But I'm, not a, I'm not a bossy bitch. I'm just a boss. Why do we got to genderize everything? All right, so back to the gender pay gap. Reasons why. Why are men and women working the same job but getting different pay? Okay, 
and I mean, remember the research, not only are they working the same job, doing the same job duties, same number of children, same marital status, same educational level, same level of seniority, same level of uh, number of work experience, years in the workforce. All these variables are controlled and there's still a gap. You know, is it, you know, we got three uh, reasons on the PowerPoint slides. And the first one that I'm going over right now is interruptions in work history. Uh, the child penalty, as in, it is most likely that when a child gets sick at school, the women will go home from work and miss work because they have to take care of children. And the men stay at work while the women go home and take care of the kid. Now, what this does is, yeah, th that's right, Nikki, end gender. Mm, if she could, well, look, next semester is a different story, Nikki. Maybe OTEP will come, come to old Arkansas Tech. I mean, I am teaching social gender next semester. She'd get up on a table and ripped her faces off. She's a boss. All right. So, um, in a uh, child penalty. Okay, yeah. So, the kid is at home and got a fever, can't go to school. The women are at home. The mothers are at home taking care of the kids. All right. Now, why? Why do the men, the, the fathers, why don't they take off work and miss? Well, let's put it this way. Let's, let's look at it this way. If men make more money than women, then men should stay at work because they bring home more money. As in, if they come home and take care of the kid, then the family unit will lose money. You see? Interesting. All right. Um, another thing, women having children, they um, miss out on promotions, opportunities, because they're at home taking care of sick kids. Because, you know, kids get sick. Somebody got to take care of them. You know, if you're really rich, you can pay somebody to take care of them. But if you're poor, you're going to miss work. Next thing you know, they're going to fire your ass because you ain't at work because your kids got pneumonia. And so is that a reason why women are, are paid less? Uh, uh, you know, that goes back to the child care duties and gender stereotypes. You know, I'm pretty positive that a man can change a dirty diaper, uh, one that's diarrhea up the child's back. I'm pretty sure a man can do that just as easy as a woman. Like I said a while ago, men and women can vacuum, you know, men and women. I'm pretty sure right now that college students in your apartment, if you're a man, I bet you, you wash your own clothes and, and you, you cook for yourself. You see what I'm saying? So it's not, you know, that, ah, look at there. Let's see. How do you pronounce your last name? Teban, Tevin, Tevin. You know how I got to call my students by the last names. I'm going to call her TBT. TBT. All right, so child penalty. Uh, I think I covered that one pretty good. Let's see. Oh, another one, interruptions in work history. I'm, I wanted to cover this part too. So women are staying at home to take care of sick kids. Also... Guess who goes to the doctor more frequently? Women. You know, uh, stereotypical, stoic men. I'm not going to the doctor. I, you know, just cut my hand off with a chainsaw. I'm going to be all right because I'm a man. Now, I was joking, but, uh, oh, just because they are, I'm missing these comments. Women, just because they are the mother, they're supposed to do everything that has to do with the kid. And man brings on the bacon. Exactly, Nikki Davis. I am I. Um, you know, it's, it's gender roles that are set up in our society. And it's not men that are forcing women to do this. Women are playing this role because they think they're supposed to, because they want to, because they grow up in a society that tells them it's okay to. You know, and I'm not saying there's nothing wrong with taking care of kids. Somebody got to do it. I'm just saying, how about a little bit more equality? You know, 
Uh, I'm pretty sure the baby was made 50-50, right, right? So why don't the child care be 50-50? Uh, if I ever was in a relationship, ha ha, uh, you know, this, this time the kid gets sick, I go home. Next time the kid gets sick, you go home. Next time I go home, you go home, back and forth. However, remember, I made the point about what if, you know, if men are making more money than women, then men should stay at work because they're going to make more money for the family unit. Um, Let's see. Okay, so another one, interruptions in work history, that women are more likely to visit the doctor, to become sick, frail, fragile, stereotype, uh, because, you know, Otep Shemaya can deadlift 185 pounds. It's not fragile. Vicious right hook. <laughs> um, anyway, but no, women go to the doctor more often, and they get sicker more often, that's a word, supposedly and therefore they miss work. Uh, so what if the people that hire people for jobs, the hiring people, HR department, when they're interviewing people and they see, ah, oh, female, how many kids you got? You got any children? And, and the female interviewee is like, yes, I have two children. And the hiring person goes, eh. we don't want nobody with children because they're going to be missing work. So they don't get hired. See, uh, or, oh, it's a woman. She's going to be sick all the time. She's going to have their period and it's going to make her sick all the time. And so we don't want to hire a woman. You see, um, it says uh, interruptions in work history. Women are three times as likely as men to have had interruptions in work history due to childbearing, child care, illness, disability. All right. That's another one with childbearing. All right. Yes. Physically in a heterosexual couple, um, you know, if they're going to procreate, the woman physically has the child. I mean, I had my kid on a Thursday and her daddy slash my husband was at work by Monday. He didn't skip a beat. All right. Um, you know, which was good because he could bring home money for the family. But, um, you know, what if I didn't have that husband to work and I just had a baby? Do you know that pregnant women get fired all the time? As in, y'all, we don't even have paid maternity leave in the United States. Lord have mercy, it just upsets my heart and soul. Look, for real, over in uh, Norwegian countries, I think it's Norway, I'm not sure, Sc Scandinavian countries, all right? I don't have my citations in my back pocket. But one, one of them countries over there... <laughs> has um let's see what uh thank you nikki one of them countries over there has paid one year maternity and paternity leave as in baby born the daddy can stay at home for a year and get paid to take care of the kid or the woman or both of them. Paid maternity leave. What do we got in the U.S.? We we barely can take off work to have a baby. Um, here I got some I got some statistics about pregnancy already right here. Um, yeah, being stressed. That's true, Nikki. All right, the Federal Pregnancy Discrimination Act of 1978. Yes, they had to make a law. Because pregnant women were getting uh, discriminated and fired all the time. Um, now, the kicker is, okay, basically this act of 1978 says that you cannot fire a pregnant woman, okay? Or, you know, uh, childbearing. I mean, when she's pregnant, I mean, has the baby, you can't fire her. However, this law is only for employers with more than 15 workers. So if you're working at some, some, uh, job and they got, and they got, uh, less than 15 employees and you get pregnant and you take maternity leave unpaid, no pay, no pay. and you go on maternity leave cause you got a, you know, one month old and you come back after about three months or six months, you, you know, want your job back. Guess what? You're fired. We done gave your job to somebody else. We need somebody to fill this position, and you was not here. Goodbye. 
Now, does that happen to men? It happens to women. You see? Uh, the pregnancy thing just eats me up alive. Um, let's see. It says... Uh, Only a fraction of women ever take action when they're fired from being pregnant. People rarely stand up and say, uh, excuse me, that's not fair. <laughs> you know, people rarely do that. Why? It says many are not aware of their rights. But you think of Arkansas, the state of Arkansas. I don't know what it's called, but whatever it's called, it means you can be fired for any reason whatsoever. You can be fired because the boss... Uh, doesn't like the color of the car you drive. I mean, you know, you can get hired or anything. Anyway, so many aren't aware of the rights. Um, others fear losing their job. So they're not going to, um, if they're able to keep them. And then some don't have the resources to pursue lengthy lawsuits. I mean, if you are a secretary, all right. Yeah. That's right. Oh, no, you can cuss. I mean, I'm cussing today in my shirt. <laughs> I got it covered. <laughs> um, yeah, so let's say that you're a secretary at a small business that's got 14 employees, and you're the secretary, and you're making minimum wage, and you, you go have a baby, and they fire you because you had a baby. You missed too much work. Uh, they need somebody to answer the phone, you know, and you're not there because you're breastfeeding you know, perpetuating species. And uh, you don't have a job, you know, you lost your job. You lost your minimum wage job. Now, how are you going to pay for a lawyer to fight for your job of minimum wage as a secretary? You see? People ain't got money like that. And lawyers ain't got time to do charity cases. Well, some of them do it. I should have been a lawyer. Should have been a Fucking lawyer. There you go, Nikki. <laughs> Should have been a lawyer. Mm. All right. Okay. Enough of that uh, upsetting pregnancy part. All right. Next reason. All right. So what we just covered for the past, oh, 30 minutes <laughs> is um, interruptions in work history as reasons for the, for the gender pay gap. Uh, child penalty on the test. Okay. As in... Uh, they call it the child penalty because you miss work to take care of a child. Reason number two, career choice. Hmm. So guess what? We've got a little thing called sex segregation in occupation. What does that mean? That we grow up in a society that tells us, women, you do these jobs, and men, you do these jobs. I mean, seriously, we could just sit here and, and tell. I, I could mention an occupation, and in your head, think of what the employee looks like. Okay? Let's go. Um, mechanic. Medical doctor. Secretary. Construction. Teacher. Professor. Yeah, the higher in education you go, the more likely to get males as, as teachers and professors. Think about it. Your kindergarten teacher. What did she, yeah, I went on ahead and gave you a pronoun there. What did your kindergarten teacher look like? Male or female? Kindergarten teacher. Female. All right. What did your uh, 12th grade anatomy and physiology teacher look like? Or trigonometry or math teacher? Male. All right. What does your intro to sociology teacher look like? Female. What does your senior level research designs for the behavioral sciences, you know, well, okay, is that's me, female. But no, the dean probably a man. Now, I know that the, the president of Arkansas Tech University is female. That's rare. Okay. 
Uh, so career choice, we've got a little thing called sex segregation at work, which means uh, women are supposed to do these type of jobs and men are supposed to do these types of jobs based on some, I'm assuming, biological meaning. You know, I mean, hell, back in the day, we thought, you know, women, you can't go to, uh, you, you can't get an education because you're on your menstrual period and you can't climb the stairs. I mean, that kind of ideology went around. So there's no telling what kind of ideology is going around today that keeps men from taking certain jobs and women from taking certain jobs. And I'm not talking about taking jobs. I, I should have getting an, a college degree for those jobs. So we're talking about career choice. All right. What we got? Um, guess what? Women are choosing careers that just so happen to be paid less. Is that the reason for the gender pay gap? Um, let's see. Uh, physical sciences, computer science, engineering usually go to men. Uh, women's jobs tend to be feminine. Those that require nurturing, caregiving, serving others, and working with people. Uh, men tend to be masculine. They are manual, relatively autonomous, often containing an element of a danger and requiring technical skills or training. Um, wow. Okay. So, I mean, seriously, this is ridiculous, y'all. Well, we on 31 minutes, but we, we keep going. We keep going. Uh, between 92 and 98%. That's a huge percentage, y'all. Between 92 and 98 percent of all registered nurses, child care workers, receptionists, and preschool and kindergarten teachers are women. So that means 2 percent are male. Do you see the sex segregation at work? Uh, only 20 percent, 3 million American teachers are men. Uh, in elementary school, only 9 percent are men. Um, that's actually down. Uh, you know, why do men not teach elementary school? Because of a stereotype that men are pedophiles. And also because elementary school teachers pay less. So men don't go for those jobs. Interesting. All right. Um, at least 98%, once again, 98% of all steel workers, mechanics, Plumbers and loading machine operators are men. Now, think about the income associated with what I just told you. I mean, I know registered nurses make a lot of money, but, uh, you know, uh, child care workers, minimum wage, you know. Uh, it says, um, even in occupations in which women are the large majority, men still get paid more. As in like nursing, guess who gets paid more in nursing? Even though it's a feminine job, got mostly women in it, guess who gets paid more? Men. Um, physicians, lawyers, judges, uh, wide gaps in earnings. All right, let's see. All right, now add on to it well, this is kind of like a little side note here, but so we've got all this inequality going on, you know, all these um, gender stereotypes and gender roles and, and ideology that women are supposed to do this and men are supposed to do this and we can't, you know, do the same, you know, a woman can't dig a ditch and a man can't raise a baby, whatever. Um, all this we've been talking about was, was talking about the average male and female. Now, let's do a little something called intersectionality which means we we got gender let's throw race on top of it what happens to the gender pay gap when we include the racial category of the gender as well all right the fastest growing segment in the labor market are african-american females and latinas um 60% of blacks working women, working black women are in clerical sales or service occupations. Ah, so when you add race on top of gender, 
the gender gap pay gap widens. So for example, you've got white man at one dollar, the average woman at 72 to 79 cents, African American female, 60 cents to the dollar, Latinas, 52 cents to the dollar. You see what I mean? The the gap is larger when race is added. Um for example, and this will this will end it. Black women with a bachelor's degree make only about fifteen hundred dollars more a year than white men with only a high school diploma. So black women can get a bachelor's degree. I mean, did y'all see? Did y'all hear that? Oh, is he? Um, I, it was just social scientific research. Um, you know, black women with a college degree only make about $1,500 more than a white male with a high school diploma. Intersectionality, gender pay gap, race and gender, the gap widens when you add race minority groups to the gender category. All right. Let's see. Okay. Third. Third reason, okay, so the first reason, interruptions in work history, being sick and taking care of children, child penalty. Second reason, career choice, what we just talked about. You know, uh, women doing women job, female jobs, men doing men jobs, and then they get paid differently. Uh, I think a stay-at-home mom should be a millionaire. <laughs> All right, third reason, blatant gender discrimination, as in... The boss says, I do not like women and I will not hire them. Discrimination, blatant, as in like, they just don't like you because of your reproductive organs and chromosomes and hormones. Um, you know, let's see. This is where our next um, little point comes in for the test is called the glass ceiling. All right, glass ceiling is on the test. It says, uh, mostly, and uh, side note, Nikki Davis, who talks about the glass ceiling in their song called Boss? Otep, Otep Shemaya. She says, I've been breaking glass ceilings since I burst on the scene. No, I've been something stereotyped since I burst on, I've been, I've been breaking glass ceilings like iPhone screens. To the critic, critics, the cynics, the drones and the clones, I kept my fist raised even when I was alone because no one believed in me except me. They tried to stifle my fire with gasoline. Okay, anyway, glass ceilings. Yes, literally, Otep Shamaya talks about glass ceilings in her 2018 song called Boss, and it is on the exam, and then that is a coincidence. I didn't do that on purpose because Otep talks about it. <laughs> That's just a coincidence. That's, that's why it's so important for her to come talk in our class. That's not happening this semester. All right, glass ceiling. Mostly invisible barrier that prevents women from reaching the executive suite. Um, it says women are good at support, but less capable of leadership. Uh, women lack mentors. Interesting. Um, like, for example... Let's say that uh, all the coworkers and everybody's hanging out and uh, after work, you know, let's unwind and let's go to the bar and get some drinks. All right. And let's say it's five guys and one ma one female. Is that one woman going to go sit with a bunch of guys at a bar and watch football and drink beer? So, but the ones that do go, the boys, they become friends and then when it's time to get hired or get a promotion or get a raise, they give it to their friends, their beer drinking buddies. And the women miss out because they're at home probably, you know, washing diapers, you know, because we don't have uh, plastic diapers. <laughs> um, so anyway, uh, so, oh, and mentors, as in, it would be nice, like, for example, me. In my duties as a professor in sociology, I look up to my mentor, Dr. Amy Chastine Miller. 
and she's female. So I can see a reflection of myself in my mentor. At other jobs like dentistry or law or, uh, you know, police work, police officers, uh, women, you know, they look up to their mentors and they don't see people that look like them as a mentor. You see what I'm saying? Um, so they might like mentors. Um, so basically if you, you know, glass ceiling is, uh, here's an example. Um, Agatha, Agatha has worked for 10 years in public relations in a large firm. She has been promoted to several higher paying managerial positions, but never to the executive spot. Even though she has directed several successful projects of, for the firm, her lack of promotion most likely illustrates the glass ceiling where you, you, you're sitting at your desk as a secretary and, you may, and you're making the phone calls and making appointments and you look up and you can see the boss, which is usually a man, and, and he's up there with his feet propped up, lighting a cigar with a hundred dollar bill <laughs> and uh, doing, making all the decisions. And you can see that top position, but you can't get there because of the glass ceiling. That's what women face. Okay. Uh, and it's blatant discrimination, blatant, blatant discrimination. Uh, Let's see, Nikki, it's like that Friends episode when Rachel didn't want to go outside to smoke with their co-workers. They would go out and talk about the job as she was left out. Ah, I never got into Friends, but I know who you're talking about when you say Rachel. But yeah, I mean, you think about it. Smoke breaks. You know, uh, you go out there and you talk about, you know, you you, you get friends and, and these kind of things. And, and then, you know, if you don't hang out with them, you miss out on, on uh, you know. Oh, okay. Sorry. Here we go. Uh, the next slide, number 27, has got the glass ceiling in it uh, as external social forces. One of my three favorite words. And then it says uh, stereotypes and uh, women like mentors. Okay. Now, wow, I can't believe it. We're getting to the end. Oh my gosh, we're almost at the end. <laughs> oh, wow. I'm surprised. I'm, I'm going to smoke about five cigarettes in a minute. All right. Now, moving on, the last uh, two. Now, we've covered the topics. You know, it just took 42 minutes to cover three topics on the exam. <laughs> um, however, the last two are about sexual harassment and violence. Okay? It is a real thing in this world. A real thing going on, you know, women are being stoned to death with honor killings. Remember that term? We've got female genital mutilation going on in some tribes of Africa. Uh, you know, we've got, and uh, side note, Otep talks about those in her song called Menocide. Um, you know, the Salem witch trials and the Salem witches got burned. Um, a lot of violence out there, okay? Um Let's start with sexual harassment, okay? Uh, sexual harassment, let me get, let me make sure I'm not. Oh, I will, Nikki, peace out. Sexual harassment, unwelcome sexual attention at work or at school, which may affect job or school performance or create a hostile environment. Okay. Um, now, let's see. Like someone, you know, uh, touching you inappropriately, someone making uh, gestures that are sexual in nature and it's inappropriate. Uh, you know, you're there to do a job. You're not there to, to hook up. Um, you know, uh, making, you know, noises when you walk by, um, looking at your body parts instead of your face when you're talking. Um you know, sexual harassment. Now, key, women can sexually harass men. Okay. So it's not just men, women too. Okay. Both men and women, both can be the perpetrator, the, the active, you know, perpetrator in, in sexual harassment cases. Now, 
However, when you look at the documents, most likely um, perpetrator is men as, as the harasser, but women also sexually harass men or other women. You see what I mean? Um, all right. Now, on your test, it's going to list, you know, like, um, it's going to list these, these are, which one of these are not sexual harassment is not sexual harassment. And it's going to list, you know, one, two, three, four items. And what is not considered sexual harassment would be like some obnoxious kid in high school that pulls your hair on the school bus. That's not sexual harassment. You know, like some kid that, or some, you know, somebody that, that's always wanting to talk to you or, um, you know, be all up in your business or something. That's not sexual harassment. But, you know, if they look at you, at your body parts, you know, if they touch your body parts, if they say something that is sexual in nature, um, you know, sexual harassment. Uh, and like I said, women can commit sexual harassment just like men. All right. Um, all right, we got a, a little a little piece in here about uh, rape. It, it's it's a um, one of every one thousand U.S. girls and women between the ages of twelve and fifty are raped each year. One in a thousand. That's pretty. That's that's uh, the typical victim is sixteen to nineteen years old. Most victims of rape know their attacker. It's not strangers. They actually know them. Um, and remember, males are also victims of rape. Okay, now moving on, uh, we need to know about this one for our test, about murder being the victim and the, and the murderer. <laughs> All right. So when we look at the relationship between killers and their victims, what we find is that men are most likely to be the victim of homicide. Men are most likely to be the perpetrator of homicide. Um, so men outnumber women as victim and as killer. I mean, think about it. Death row. We got 99% of death row inmates are male. Less than 1% are female. Uh, you know, there's a huge discrepancy. Now, uh, we could go down this route about the criminal justice system being biased, women get away with murder, the black widow, black, you know, people think, oh, women can't do that. And really they can. They got dead bodies in their basement. I know. Uh, we could go on and on. But, uh, you know, what we see is, yes, there's mostly men, more men in jail than women. Uh, and then when it comes to murder, it's more like the victim is most likely to be male. The killer is most likely to be male. You put race on top of it, it will be young black male and, and age. Holy moly, we are on the last page. Um, and we're done because that last page is about politics and I ain't going over that. Uh, wait, there's one more PowerPoint slide. Oh, the killers and their victims. Yeah, I mean, seriously, it, it, wait, like 89% uh, of killers are men. 77% of victims are men. So we've got a big, um, you know, something going on with violence and gender. Now, all right, you guys, 48 minutes, we have finished the gender part of lecture. Um, thank you for, for hanging out and watching. Uh, I hope that you learned something. Um, you know, these items will be on the test. Now today, yes, I am teaching about gender today, <laughs> but you know how I get in class and I like to play OTEP songs and, and, and talk about examples and get your opinions and facts and things like that. And we get off topic. Well, these videos here are exposing you to the information that's on the exams. So if you, you ain't got to watch them, just listen to them, you know, three o'clock in the morning when you're trying to go to bed <laughs> and, uh, you, you can learn something. So, uh, but this episode, part four, you need to know gender tracking, child penalty, glass ceiling, sexual harassment, men and women as victims and killers. All right. Deuces. My next video is going to be going over the study guide. 
I don't know if I'm going to do another one right now. I'm kind of tired because uh, it's 1040 and I got to see y'all at one and two. All right. Peace out. See y'all.